Van Jones is our not-so-secret weapon to tell our story. He says what we thinks, but his delivery is so much better. Uh, social entrepreneur, CNN host, founder of Dream Corps, Green for All, Love Army, and honestly, so many more revolutionary campaigns and initiatives, all in the name of social and environmental justice. Please welcome Emma board member, Van Jones. Hey, that's cool music. <laughs> Steal that from my show. Um, well, first of all, I am glad to be here. I want to just be as honest as I can. Um, we're all friends here. So I want to talk about the bad news and the good news. But the bad news first. You know, championships are won in the fourth quarter. Uh, it doesn't matter how well you start. It's when things get tough at the end. Can you adapt? Can you change your performance? Can you learn and can you get better? Uh, championships are won in the fourth quarter and we're in the fourth quarter and we're down. We're in the fourth quarter and we're down. And so I want to just be as brutally honest as I can be about where I think we're off so we can be more powerful as we try to get back on. First of all, you can't talk about the climate and the climate crisis without talking about the political climate and the crisis in the political climate. And uh, this is a nonpartisan gathering and my points aren't about Democrats or Republicans. The people who really want change in the country, who want to see us uh, clean up and green up, who want to see people going to work every day, uh, being able to take care of their kids without poisoning the planet, without polluting the skies. Those people, the people who want that kind of change, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, are in real danger right now of being distracted from the hard work that needs to be done by a fairy tale, by a fantasy, by a complete distraction of our own making. I want to say this very, very clearly. Bob Mueller is not the tooth fairy that's going to bring you the country that you want. He's not. There is a complete distraction now that we have to get out of the way so we can get sober about the real work. If you love this president, if you don't love this president, here's what I can tell you. He is going to be there for a while. He's going to be there for a while. Here's why I can tell you that for sure. First of all, we are almost 250 years old as a country, almost a quarter of a millennium. We've impeached two presidents in the entire history of the country and removed zero. We've never removed a president, ever. Because you can impeach a president all you want. Bill Clinton was impeached, but he wasn't removed from office. Johnson was impeached in the 1800s, wasn't removed from office. It's not about the impeachment, it's about the removal. And it takes three quarters of the Senate to remove a president. You don't have three quarters of the senators who agree that they're all senators. <laughs> okay? So this entire thing doesn't make sense. It turns out in a democracy, and listen, you can, you can trust me, I have a very sophisticated theory about this. Uh, I went to Yale Law School. I've taught the stuff at Princeton. Uh, I, I work for President Obama. I have a very, hang with me, this is very sophisticated stuff. If you want to have a democracy work, you have to win elections. <laughs> That's what you have to do. You have to win elections. Praying for the impeachment fairy <laughs> to give you the country that you want is a terrible strategy. And yet, if you look at your Facebook feed, and you look at your Instagram feed, and you look at your Twitter feed, I guarantee you, you have more talk and more tweets about porn stars than the fact that this is a midterm election and maybe the most important midterm election of your life. Because a fantasy has taken over the otherwise good thinking of, of people who know better. 
you got to win elections. you got to win elections. And right now, we have in our hands an agenda and a, a, a potential strategy that would not only be good for the planet and good for people, it would be good for politics if we would talk about it in the right way. And this is not for either party who wants to take it. we got a couple of parties, Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Green, whatever party you're in. What people desperately need is more work, more wealth, and better health. That's what people need. That's what people don't have. That's why people are upset. That's why people are willing to vote for all kind of people, trying to get some relief because they want more work, more wealth, and better health. In the Democratic Party, you had a complete rebellion in 2016. Uh, Bernie Sanders got 47% of the vote in the Democratic primary. Why? I mean, I love Bernie Sanders, but he's not your typical presidential looking type of dude. Um, but he got 47% because people want more work, more wealth, and better health. And they don't feel that anybody's listening to them. Republican Party, they had a rebellion too. And the, the rebel actually won the election uh, won the nomination and the election, and he's in the White House right now. Uh, I don't like uh, his agenda, but he's there because people didn't feel that their needs were being met. If you want more work, more wealth, and better health, the green agenda is your agenda. You're, you can get more work, more wealth, and better health going along with an ecological revolution that would put up solar panels, that would put up wind turbines, that would retrofit every building, that would let us grow organic food locally. The green agenda is, a, is an economic solution, but we don't talk about it that way. And because we don't, people literally think that we are some bizarre elitists who like you know, kale more than we like them And then they vote for other people. And I want to suggest a couple of just very basic ideas uh, for um, uh, blue states, uh, for red states. And then I want to just talk to you about you. Uh, because we're counting on you guys to do a lot of stuff. And right now, you're still in post-traumatic stress. from an election two years ago. <laughs> so I'll get to you in a second, but let me just point out how good your ideas are in case you forget. I just want to remind you <laughs> how good your ideas are. First of all, in blue states, California, New York, Connecticut, other places that are blue, we have a tremendous to take the blue states way green. People are so frustrated and fed up with what's happening in Washington, D.C. that you've got a lot of energy right now just being burned up on outrage that could be put to use to drive us further green. If D.C.'s not going to do it, we have to do twice as much as we've already done. There's a tendency for us to think, well, you know, Jerry Brown's so much better than Trump. Good for Jerry. I say good for Jerry. I love Jerry. But we can't let any of our leaders now stay on the traje trajectory that they were on before, they've got to go harder. We should be talking about 100% renewable in the blue states, 100% renewable in the blue states. That's, we have to raise the bar in the blue states. Uh, and that's a job agenda too. I mean, just to be very clear, if you, if you have 100% renewable as a goal, uh, you can create a, a green Silicon Valley of innovation, entrepreneurship, financing, et cetera. You can light these campuses on fire with passion and excitement. You can get all these, you can, get, you can create hope. And hope can create miracles when it comes to technology. That is completely doable in the blue states. Instead, we talk about porn stars all the time. It's, it's the dumbest strategy I've seen liberals uh, take on at the worst possible time. We know he sucks. I didn't say who, so I'm still nonpartisan. 
but we know somebody sucks. <laughs> what are we going to do about it? That's what people want to hear. What are we going to do about it? Can we show in our states, in our cities, in our tribes, in our counties, on our campuses, in our companies, that we've got a much better way? And can we prove it? And can we have working class people and ordinary people and women and people of color and young people standing up and saying, my life is better because of this? That's how you win. You know, you can sit up here and, and let the other side, you know, trigger you all day long. But when you show up triggered, you're not effective. When you show up passionate with solutions and people who, whose lives are better, that becomes a party everybody wants to go to, no matter, you know, uh, uh, which side of the aisle you're on. That looks like a fun place to be. And we can do that right now and should be doing it. Counter argument's one thing, counter example. Counter example. That's what we should be doing. In particular, you know, I'm a part of an organization called Green for All. And Green for All has been doing extraordinary work, especially in the transportation sector. Now that sounds super boring. As soon as I said it, I, the heads just fell off. I just, <laughs> he was doing pretty well, then he said transportation sector, and I woke up 20 minutes later. <laughs> But this is exciting stuff, man. If you think about this, if you live in a community that's impacted by poverty, impacted by excessive incarceration, impacted by pollution, you got diesel trucks sitting there idling, giving your kids asthma. You got city buses coming by, they're bringing you transportation help, but they're leaving behind pollution. The leave, leaving behind asthma, the leaving behind respiratory ailments. You've got a problem. Even the stuff that the city's sending into your community to help you is hurting you. Now think, what if you had an all-electric bus fleet? What if you, and, and what if you got the best financiers in the world to figure out how to pay for it? Because the cost savings on the back end, in terms of fuel costs, uh, health costs, can you capture those to pay for it? What if you had that conversation going on? Where you're gonna have a clean fleet in all these poor communities and put people to work building those buses, making those smart batteries, bring in the financial sector. We shouldn't always be as progressives bashing Wall Street. Uh, there's a lot of bad people on Wall Street, but I tell you what, I can't do basic math. So if you want me to finance these solutions, you're in deep doo-doo, okay? <laughs> we need everybody to be a part of this thing. We sometimes get on this thing where it's like, well, you know, if you're, if you're this color, if you're this gender, if you're from the, then, you know, it's almost like some kind of weird pecking order as if, you know, if you could only just boil, it, boil the movement down to just like, you know, I don't know, left-handed lesbians of color, I don't know, like some really <laughs> pure group then we could solve all the problems. <laughs> and that could be true, but I don't think so. And I think our agenda, because it's solution oriented, can also be bridge building. See, when you're trying to solve a problem, you need more friends and fewer enemies. You're trying to blame somebody, you can make all the enemies you want to. When you're trying to help somebody, you want everybody to come running. And that's another thing that's key to who you are. You are inherently about an ecosystem, ecological health. Let's get everything moving in a positive direction. So we don't have to, uh, listen, you got you know, bad people on Wall Street, they should go to jail like everybody else and then get like yoga in jail, <laughs> get kale in jail, and then come out transformed, you know, mm, see? <laughs> but that's not necessarily the best Thing for us to be talking about all the time, it's like how bad, mad we are at the people, you know, in that, in that part of the world. We need everybody. So you've got an inherently job creating, wealth generating, health building, solution oriented, bridge building set of solutions and a moment where everything's negative, everything's divisive, everything's, we're mad at each other. So you, you, you've got power, healing power in your hand. Say, yeah, but what about those other people? Those terrible other people. Now, I spent a lot of time in uh, K 
counties that went for Donald Trump. I met a lot of people who went in the voting booth and voted for Donald Trump. Good people, smart people, caring people, family people who voted for Donald Trump. It's hard for me to explain this to my friends who don't have the opportunity to meet the people I've met. But there are people who have skills and families and pride who lost an awful lot in the past 15, 20 years. They did. I remember going to Ohio, met a guy, 54 years old, white guy, straight, white, heterosexual male. Grr. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag enemy, right? So. <laughs> he had uh, lost his job about six years earlier, six years earlier, the factory that he had worked for closed and he couldn't get another job. He stopped going to church because he felt ashamed by the way people looked at him. The people who asked him about a job and the ones who didn't, he felt ashamed with both. Two kids, one was on opioids, got hooked on pills. And in that town, like many towns, and we don't talk about this enough, Brother Blitz, they, on Friday nights, call for freezer trucks to be brought in because so many people are dying of opioid overdoses that the morgues fill up by Saturday night. And they have to put, take freezer trucks that carry hamburger meat and put the bodies in there on Sunday so that on Monday they can get the bodies out of the county. This is happening all across the country. Every time the phone rings, this dad wonders, is it the morgues? office. This is the coroner's office calling me about my boy. He's got another kid, his good kid, his daughter, who is in college. He told me he was so proud when she came home, first semester in college. And he's telling all his friends about his daughter. He's got something he got some pride about. His little girl and how good she's doing because he wants people to look at him like a good man. Talk about his daughter. Brag on his daughter. She gets home. With the phone ringing. <laughs> she's not there. 45 minutes. Daddy, you're a bigot. Daddy, you're a racist. Daddy, you need to own your heterosexual privilege. I don't know what he said. He probably shouldn't have said it. But does anybody give a damn about me? I'm trying, doing the best I know to do. I 
when this factory closed, I didn't go. I was helping my black kids in Oakland dealing with their problems, which are many, as I've told you about many times. But I didn't go. I didn't go check on it. NAACP didn't go. Environmental groups didn't go. NOW didn't go. You know who went? Donald Trump. I have a hard time now. I don't fit in anywhere. Funerals are funerals, man. What are we doing? Do we care about everybody or don't we? Is this for everybody or is it not? If this is to make us feel better and we're superior and these other people are stupid and if they don't listen to NPR, then they be worthy. If that's what it is, then guess what? Hell with it. But we're willing to go and tell that guy, listen, I don't agree with you on the Muslims and the, and the transgender and all that sort of stuff. I don't agree with you, and, I, and, and you're better than this, and I expect you to be better than this, but in the meantime, while we fight about this, can you build me a wind turbine? Can you build me a, a wind turbine? It's as much steel as in 30 cars. 5,000 finely machined parts. Boeing level engineering. Can you build me a wind turbine? Can you build me a solar array? Can you build me a smart car with a smart battery? Do you have those skills? Well, if you have those skills, I need you. Part of the reason I'm mad at you is not just because you're wrong, it's because I need you. I can't have the country I want without you. When we start talking like that, we might get a different hearing. We need each other. What are we doing? What are we doing? <coughs> We're hurt. It's all right to be hurt. I understand. I was bullied too. And then the big bully wins the election, and then we all freak out. I understand. I understand. Enough is enough. We're big people now. We got more money than a lot of those guys do. Got a lot of good things in our lives. We can show some grace. That doesn't mean we need to put up with people being mistreated. I'm not going to back off of any of our agenda. I'm proud of the circle that we created that in 2016 that included Muslims and proud of it, included uh, Black Lives Matter and those mothers that had lost people and proud of it, included those immigrants children and their families and proud of it and didn't back down. I'm proud of that. We include, had a circle that included people who been left out for a long time. I'm proud in our circle. We had L LGBT and Q folks and the whole alphabet, damn it. <laughs> Everybody. I'm proud of that. And I'm not going to back off of that and we shouldn't back off of that. It's a beautiful circle we created. But I think it's OK to admit that we may have drawn that circle just a little bit too small this last time. Just a little bit. There may have been some people out there hurting who they didn't think that we cared about them. You can't be mad at these young lost kids who join gangs if we aren't out there giving them something else to do or who join extremist groups, jihadist groups, if we aren't out there giving them something else to do, or who join racist groups, if we don't give them something else to do. If we're not out there fighting for them and saying, we need you, and we want you, and we've got something for you that'll make your life better, 
If we aren't out there making the case, don't be mad at the people who are. We mad at the people who are. It's time for us to step up, man. It's fourth quarter. It's fourth quarter. We've got the best ideas to help the most people over the longest period of time come together, create something beautiful. And it's our fears and our insecurities and our unhealed hurts that are now the biggest obstacle. So you think about that. We have enough people in this room to solve most of these problems right now. I mean, between your Rolodexes and everybody you guys know, well, you can't say Rolodex anymore. <laughs> Kids say, what? <laughs> your smartphones app or whatever. I don't know what it is. I still say roll it in. Don't forget who you are. Don't become what you're fighting. Don't forget who you are. Don't become what you're fighting. You're never going to out ugly these ugly people. That's bad news for you. You're trying. You're not going to out-hate these haters. You're trying. You're not good at it. You're just not good at it. You suck at hating people. <laughs> it's bad news for you, as hard as you're trying. You're miserable. Your therapist is rich. <laughs> and you're going to lose the next 10 elections. Because you just suck at hating people. You're just not any good at it. And I don't want you to get good at it. Love everybody. I gotta love you back. How but God, God Van Jones has just gone too far. This guy, god damn him. <laughs> Wants us to reach out to those people. <laughs> I've been black my whole life. When somebody starts talking about those people and these people, I get very uncomfortable. That's dehumanization. That's othering. Those people, those people. I don't need you to love me, because I love me. I love me. And that's my greatest achievement. That's my greatest achievement. It wasn't easy. It was hard for me to love me. It's much easier for me to hate you than love me. But I did it. I'm proud of myself. I did it. So you don't got to love me. I love me. And I love me enough to love you too. And if I keep on loving you, at some point you're going to love you. And if you love you enough, at some point you just might love me back. That's got to be our agenda. That's got to be our approach. It'd be one thing if you're just loving people with no answer, loving people with no solution, loving people with no job, loving people with no, no ability to take that asthma inhaler out their baby's pocket. You can take the asthma inhaler out their baby's pocket and you want to say, you suck, vote for me. What kind of strategy is that? What kind of strategy? You suck, you're a bigot, you're a sexist, you're a horrible person, now vote for me. That's not a good slogan. <laughs> it's not. You've got something so beautiful and so amazing and so powerful and so potent and so needed and so necessary that the Trump voters and the Black Lives Matter kids should both be running in here. And they will when we love ourselves enough to love them first. Thank you very much.